where we begin the message. Let's uh, open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly yeah, Father, Lord, we can say something to you. Lord, I just want to thank you once again. As always, you are a good father to us. Uh, you have provided us with many things, with good family and friends. I thank you, Lord, for continuing to uh, keep this church together. Uh, for continuing to give us strength. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we will continue to be strengthened by you. As we read your word today, I pray, Lord, that you would be the one to speak to our hearts. Reveal your personal will to our lives. That we may uh, be obedient to your word. I pray all the same with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The book of 2 Corinthians opens up with a message of hope in the midst of trouble. Paul is constantly bringing praise to God. Yet the circumstances that they had commonly found themselves in could not have been pleasant. Now he doesn't focus heavily on their great troubles and tribulations. He doesn't go into incredible detail on such things. Because that's not the purpose of the letter. But it feels like he is reminding them of the struggles he has been facing up until this point. From a glance at the first two chapters, we can only think that Paul may have been going through some difficult situations. He must have been hit hard with spiritual warfare. We get a glimpse of his struggles in the book of Acts. From Acts, we learn that Paul traveled far to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. And in doing so, he's met with much opposition. He was despised and persecuted. Some people even wanted to kill him. His life was never easy. And so he begins at the start of the book with one of the most uh, encouraging passages of scripture. He, he praises God as the God of all comfort, comforts us in our lives. He is grateful to God for the comfort. And while it is very encouraging to hear such things, we cannot ignore why this is important. It's important because of all the trouble and distress they have been facing. Paul wishes to comfort the Corinthian church. But it's not done out of life, an easy life full of peace and prosperity. He wishes to comfort them in their troubles while he's in the midst of his own troubles. This is why he says, Praise be to God. Because he's not overwhelmed by his troubles. He's not overcome by distress. But rather, he is comforted by God. Christ Jesus is always his source of hope. And then he continues to speak on various matters. Paul does speak mostly in a positive tone throughout. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the best of news. Things are not perfect. Paul mentions that he faced such great trouble in his mission work that he thought he was going to die. He 
But God saved him. Then Paul mentions that he really wants to visit the church in Corinth. But he can't do so. Even though he really, really wants to visit. And as he continues his journey, some things are amiss. He does not quite have peace of mind because some things are not going the way he wanted to. But he thanks God again. For all that God has continued to do in spite of all these issues and setbacks. It's a struggle, it's always a struggle. And even though he was called uh, by God and God leads him to wherever he needs to go, there's always trouble along the way. Something is always out of place. And before we continue further, I'm going to get into the word and we're going to continue our discussion uh, by reading chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. And it reads, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. 第七节，我们有着宝贝放在瓦器里，要显明怎么大的能力，是出于神，不是出于我们。我们失面受敌，却不被困住，心里作乱，却不致失望。遭逼迫，却不必丢弃，打倒了，却不致死亡。身上常带
You can use it to make your yard look nice. And sand can be great too. Especially for kids. Uh, every time we go to the beach for a vacation, I just see kids just excited to play in the sand. Even though there's nothing much we do with that sand, it's just special for them. They can spend all day just playing in the sand. But clay has a very different use for us. It needs to be molded and formed into something. Otherwise, we just won't really care for it. We won't see much reason for it. And this is one of the ways that God describes us. We are like clay. And if we are willing to give ourselves up to God, then He can make something out of us. He can shape us according to His good will. He can make us into what we need to be. In this passage, Paul describes their position as jars of clay. In a way, we can say that it's like he's calling us all to be jars of clay. Yeah, that's not how we often picture ourselves. Uh, a jar of clay is not really a bad thing. However, in spite of the fact that a jar of clay can be useful and can look nice, it's not really an amazing thing. It's certainly not going to be on anyone's Christmas list. If you were to describe yourself using a symbol, some kind of inanimate object, I think most people would choose to be something a bit different. Perhaps you'd consider yourself something more sturdy. Something more beautiful. Or simply just something more useful. No one would normally picture themselves as something so simple and ordinary and boring. And yet this is what we are to be like. Or rather, this is just simply what we are. A jar of clay is formed. It is created with a purpose. Now you may not think highly of it when you see one. Like I said before, it's not really an exciting thing in general. If you see a jar of clay, you're, you may not care for it. It may not even seem like, seem like anything special to you. But that is beside the point. The reason you do not care for that jar is because you have nothing to do with it. You did not form it, nor was it intended for you. But what if it was? When a little child works on a piece of art, the meaning behind it can be deeper than we see. They may have spent a long time working on it. They may have put much effort and care in it. And yet the reason they work on it is often not for themselves. It's for someone else. It's usually something they want to offer to their parents. Their parents do so much for them. They recognize that. They know they can't really give much back. And so they give something that they can do. But when you look at it, a work of art from a really young child, you probably can't really appreciate it that much. Maybe you can't even tell what it is. 
I look at the drawings of my niece, the youngest in my house. And I can't tell whether it's a picture of a zoo or a picture of a family. But it has value. It still has worth in her eyes and in the eyes of her parents. They'll put it on the fridge for everyone to see. And for most people, it's not going to matter much. It's like a jar of clay. But it matters to them. And that's what really counts. God gives us purpose. God gives us worth. And it's most apparent when the power of the gospel is at work within us. This is why we are to be like these jars of clay. Not because of anything special about the jar itself. But because it can hold the treasure inside. Let's read verse 7 again. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Uh, a popular theme in Paul's letters is the power of the gospel. It's a power that should amaze. But it's a power that comes out from us. And it, that just sometimes goes away against our way of thinking. Because we usually think that greatness comes from greatness. Uh, just picture the Olympics, for example. Uh, this year, the year 2020, is another year for the Olympic Games. It's such an incredible competition because it brings together the best of the best. We have all trained extensively to compete in various events. For most uh, for many of these events, the competition is just centered around remarkable individuals. But it's not only about the individual. It's also about the country that they represent. But what leads them to victory? Is it the sheer talent and passion of that individual? Or is it because of where they came from? The reasons for victory may be plenty. But ultimately it's the individual that is the deciding factor. And yet when they go out into the opening ceremony, when they're in the middle of the competition, the country is at the forefront. Both the individual and the country are honored by the victory. That is not how the gospel works for us. The treasure that we have is the gospel. But even though it's it to be in our hearts, guiding our lives, its purpose is not to make us look better. It's, it's to point the way to God. The greatness of the treasure inside should outshine the jar outside. The more we look into this treasure and come to the knowledge of God, the more we should feel humbled. The power belongs to God alone. The glory belongs to God alone. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to meet God? There are several instances in the Bible that we get to see people come into the presence of God. And usually very similar. They fall to their knees. They bow in reverence. They tremble in great fear. 
all out of instinct. The presence of the worthy God compels us to feel our unworthiness. Because we pale in comparison to the greatness and holiness of the Almighty God. We cannot run away from our weakness. Nor can we hide it. It's in plain sight. Let's continue reading verses 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So we Lately, there's been a new scare going around. The news about it is endless. People continue to talk about it everywhere in the world. I'm referring to the coronavirus. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard about it. The world seems to be in a state of concern over it. Countries, including our own, are putting restrictions on the borders to try to keep it out. And even people who come back from China uh, in general have been advised to stay home just in case. While the world continues to cautiously watch over the situation, it just feels like we've been here before. Every once in a while, a new crisis appears. Uh, we try to fight, but, uh, fight it. We try to deal with it. And the last few times, we have managed to bring it under control. And just when it seems like peace has returned to the world, something new shows up and brings us to tr through troubles all over again. We can't stop it. It's happened before. It's happening now. And it will happen again. Our lives are truly fragile. Every once in a while, we get that reminder from the world. It just slaps us in the face with that wake-up call. We're fragile, just like jars of clay. We are really no different. Every time I get a paper cut, I just think to myself, we are so frail. How I get hurt by something so flimsy on accident? And even the virus. The virus. It's just such a tiny thing you can't even see. And yet it causes such Panic on a global scale. Paul felt this often throughout his mission. He felt the frailty and weakness of his life. He experienced such great pressure and trouble. Which is why he says, outwardly, we are wasting away. But he also says, inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Though he feels the threat of death, he also feels the strength of God. Because he's not focused on his present troubles, but on the eternal glory that outweighs them all. What was most important to him through all the pain and his stress was the treasure that sustained him. That relationship he had with God. That was all he needed 
That's all we need. We need to be renewed daily in God's strength. For with each new day comes new troubles. Let us continue to strive to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. By letting the light of the gospel shine through our faith and our deeds. In these times where the world seems ever dark. Let us end in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, you know our troubles. And you see the state that our world is in. You know, Lord, uh, that uh, we are in this position because of our sin. Uh, everyone's destiny as a living creature is to die. But you offer life. I just pray, O oh Lord, that we would uh, just be obedient to your word. That we would be uh, strengthened by your power. To share the gospel to those who are hurting and in need. May your love and hope comfort us. So that we can in turn comfort others. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.